Matthew chapter 16. Gospel of Matthew chapter 16. Start the reading at verse 13. Matthew 16, 13. Such an interesting passage. The second half of chapter 16 just has really interesting turns to it. I mean, you can imagine at this point um, that there's a tremendous amount of momentum taking place in the ministry of Jesus, and the disciples' outlook uh, of, of what's going to happen in the future is, is tremendous. They're, they've got big, grandeur visions um, for um, this kingdom that Jesus has been mentioning and their part to play in the kingdom. In fact, uh, they have just seen, not too um, long before this, another miraculous feeding of 4,000 plus people. So I don't know if you realize this, but Jesus did that two different times. If you weren't aware of that, that, that's true. It was a feeding of 5,000 or it was a feeding of 4,000. And so, um, anyway, so we're we're now at at verse 13. Here's what happens. When Jesus came to the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, those following him around, who do people say I am? Who do people say the Son of Man is? Now, this is a really controversial question he's throwing out there because no doubt they're hearing a number of different things. People are seeing and experiencing these amazing miracles and they're trying to determine who this Jesus is. After all, he's a man born of a woman and, and um, <clears throat> he didn't come like through the temple. I, I mean, there, there's some confusing things. When you think about these people looking for Messiah it just seemed like Jesus snuck in the back door on them, and they're trying to figure out at this point who this Jesus is. And so he just point blank asked them, who are people saying that I am? Well, they reply, well, some say you're John the Baptist. Others say you're Elijah, and still others, Jeremiah or, or one of the prophets. But what about you? What about you, my disciples? You who follow me day in and day out. You who have heard all of my words as they have come forth from my heart. Who do you say I am? Well, Simon Peter, being the awesome guy and the, the guy that just kind of jumps out there with his words, jumps out there with his responses, um, you know, this is the same guy that when Jesus, uh, that, that climbed out of the boat and, and walks on the water with Jesus. I mean, Peter does some really cool and interesting things, and he does some really um, rough things as well. But it's Simon Peter that jumps out there with his words, you are the Christ, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. You are Messiah. And Jesus responds, blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah. This was not revealed to you by man, but by my Father in heaven. You have heard his voice and have come to some level, some form of understanding of who I am. Now, You may not totally get what I'm about yet, but you understand who I am. Yes, I am. And I tell you this, Peter, that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not overcome it. Folks, if that's not words of victory that we can have now, I don't know what you're waiting for, (laughs) because that is awesome and powerful. The gates of Hades will not prevail this church that Jesus is going to build. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Understand that I am 
pouring out my spirit upon you and you will carry that same authority that I have been carrying, that you have been witnessing, that you have been experiencing. I'm going to pour that out into you. You will be my hands and my feet. And then after this tremendous declaration, he says, now keep your mouth shut. He warned his disciples not to tell anyone that he was the Christ. Do you understand why he had to give them this instruction at this point? If they start unloading this information, people are already trying to figure out who this Jesus is. Remember, when the feeding of the 5,000 took place, they were ready to make him king, and he sensed it in his spirit and therefore withdrew. People cannot understand at this point that he is Messiah because they won't allow him to go to the cross. That is the reason he was born. He's wanting his disciples to understand this because they need to know when all the events take place, they need to be able to look back and see that Jesus told them that this was going to take place. They need to understand the prophetic ministry of Christ. But he's telling them, Keep your mouth shut on this. This cannot get out yet. It's not the time for people to know. Well, from that time on, Jesus began to explain to his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer many things at the hands of the elders, at the chief priests, the teachers of the law, basically the church leaders of the day. He's going to have to suffer many things at their hands and, and that he must be killed and on the third day be raised to life now you are one of those disciples following him around and you have been experiencing all the amazing things taking place and you have seen him do tremendous miracles and you have, are developing in your head what life is going to be like from here on out with this kingdom that jesus is setting up and the part that you're going to have to play with it hey you're going to be a big wig in this new government that that's being set up and, and you have this huge visions of grandeur, and then Jesus comes and says, by the way, I'm going to die. You're probably going to have a problem with that. Let's just be honest. I mean, that's shattering your thought processes. And so Peter, God bless him, jumps out there again. Peter takes Jesus aside. <clears throat> Excuse me, Jesus, we need to do some counseling here. Never, Lord. This shall never happen to you. This is the same guy that has just made this tremendous declaration. You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus has just told him, hey, that is amazing that you understand that, and blessed are you. And and by the way, you are Peter, and upon this rock, this declaration that you have made, I am going to build my church, and the gates of Hades won't even overcome it. And then Peter, the same guy, pulls him aside and says, you will never die. And Jesus turns and says, get behind me, Satan. Get behind me, Satan. You are a stumbling block to me. You do not have in mind the things of God, but the things of men. Whoa, it's like a car dropping a transmission. What in the world has just happened? I mean, in just a matter of a few verses, this Peter, this Simon, has gone from, wow, you did an amazing thing with your words and your insight, to you don't even have the things of God in mind. We see our humanity has a tendency to get in the way even with the best of intentions, and understand that Peter's intentions were absolutely good. He's, going, he's just telling his leader, his, um, his teacher, I'm not, we're not going to let you die. This is not going to happen. The problem was Peter hasn't really been listening to what Jesus has been saying. And he really didn't understand the main role of Messiah. Redemption. Salvation. 
He had to go to the cross for our sins. And it's, I mean, we get that. We understand that now, but if you put yourself into that time with what they had in their minds and what they were experiencing, you can understand you'd be right there with Peter. No way. Uh Uh-uh. I'll put on the bulletproof vest and I'll walk in front of you. We'll put a shield around you, Jesus. No one's going to touch you. No one's going to bring harm to you. You just keep doing the amazing things you're doing. Let the momentum go. I mean, we, we, we are, we're on fire, Jesus. Let's just keep this up. In just a matter of a short amount of time, Peter turns from a, a rock to a block. You ever had that experience before? I mean, are we really that different? Folks, you know that it's, it's challenging to maintain the mindset where you are seeking the face of God and hearing His voice, allowing Him to be the leader regardless of what He wants to do. Our humanity tends to get in the way, especially when he starts talking about hard stuff. Oh, you know, the, the, the declaration in, in, that, in that private conversation of Peter saying, hey, you are the Christ, you are the Messiah, um, that was kind of like giving a testimony at church. I mean, that, that's easy to let those words pour out on a day like today. But then when Jesus starts talking about the hard stuff, the life-altering hard stuff, because let me tell you, those guys knew, I mean, they, 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 they had a, a pretty good idea when Jesus ta- starts talking about the fact that he's going to die, their lifestyle is going to change. And everything that they had in mind is going to be wiped out. This will never happen to you, Jesus Get behind me, Satan. For you are a stumbling block to me. You know, it's interesting because really, Jesus is talking directly to Satan, I believe. There there is just that, that, in this moment, I believe that Peter is letting his humanity rule over what, what he has been tracking with God. And Satan comes up and brings temptation to Jesus once again. And you and you can go you can go back to that time in the desert when it was Jesus and Satan and, and Satan is trying to get Jesus off track. Hey, you know, Jesus, why don't you just climb up to the top of this temple, throw yourself down, the angels will catch you. Everybody will know that that you are God, that you are amazing, and and wow, just think about what life can be like after that. Satan knows he cannot allow Jesus to go to the cross. And even in this brief but poignant and powerful conversation with this future church leader, Satan comes right through his voice trying to get Jesus off track once again. And Jesus just talks straight to him, get behind me. You don't have in mind the things of God, but the things of men. Then he goes on to say just this litany of powerful things. 